Hello, this is Dr. Missick, and I want to answer a very important question, and that's, what is the Bible all about? Now, a long time ago, there was a story about uh, two rabbis. This is before the time of Jesus. And there's Rabbi Hillel and Rabbi Shammai. And there's a Gentile, uh, some Greek, and uh, he's traveling on the world, and he was investigating different religions, and he came to Judaism. He couldn't get his mind around it. He couldn't grasp it. And he had a little patience after studying for some time. He's confused. So he went to Rabbi Shammai and said, he stood on one foot, put his hand on his ankle and his right foot, and he stood there and said, Rabbi Shammai, I have a question for you. Could you tell me what the law is all about, you know, as I stand on one foot, which means in a short amount of time, make it concise, break it down for me. And Shammai was offended by the sacrilege. And he's a carpenter, so he had, I guess, his ruler, his measuring stick, and he beat this blasphemous and impetus, impious uh, Gentile with his, the stick and chased him away. That's what you get for impiety. So then there's two famous rabbis. There's Rabbi Shammai, who gave this, uh, this Gentile a good whopping. And then he went to Rabbi Hillel, the esteemed Rabbi Hillel. And he put his, his ankle on his hand and stood on one foot and said, Rabbi Hillel, tell me. What is the whole of the law? Uh, tell me this as I stand on one foot, which means not very long, right? So Rabbi Hillel says, What is hateful unto you, do not do unto your fellow man. This is the whole law. The rest is commentary. Now go and study. So that was the answer that Rabbi Hillel gave to the impious, uh, disrespectful, or perhaps just curious a uh, simple man, a simple man who wanted an answer, uh, this unnamed Greek or Gentile. So that's a very interesting and thought-provoking story. It's two, uh, I guess, attitudes towards religion. Uh, I guess someone who's compassionate versus someone who's stern uh, with these two rabbis. And uh, I want to say, really quickly, what is the whole Bible about? Well, I would, if I was going to answer this question... Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a couple of sentences, but who knows? Maybe the first, uh, the first one would be sufficient. Let's begin with this. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. That's John 14, 6. No one else can help you. Uh, it says in 1 Timothy 2, verse 5, there is, no, there is one God. There's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace we are saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the question we've arrived at, I guess, that we've arrived at is this. Now, perhaps a little one sentence answer could be, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's other verses you could quote uh, as well. But, uh, let's look at what we must do to be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And your household. That's what Paul uh, said to the Philippian jailer. And that might be, uh, that's from the book of Acts, that might be a good enough answer. But let's think about what you must do. Pray to God in your own words. Because this speak be heartfelt, sincere. Admit you are a sinner and that only the Lord Jesus can save you. That's Romans 3.23. Secondly, repent. Be willing to turn away from your sin and submit to God's will. See Luke 13, 5, verse 3, or point 3 here. Believe that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, in his own language in Aramaic, it's Yeshua, Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus the Messiah. He died on the cross and shed his blood to pay the price for your sins. And he rose again in victory over death, hell, and the grave. That's Romans chapter 10, verse 9. 4. Ask God to save you. See Romans 10, verse 13. Five, ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord or take control of your life. Now, let's say you did all that. And it's really simple. Like, it's a childlike little simple message. And that's what Jesus said. If anyone wants to do the kingdom of heaven, let them humble himself and come like a child, right? And Jesus said, little children come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So the message isn't too complicated. So actually, it's a very simple message. And why shouldn't it be? But, say you made this decision, you repented of your sins, you accepted Christ as Savior, you recognized what he did on the cross for you, you have to adhere to, to, adhere to his teachings, right? He came and spent three years teaching us about the kingdom of God. We should listen to what he has to say, right? If you really made Jesus your Lord or King, then act like it. Number one, 
Read your Bible every day to get to know Christ better. Number two, talk to God in prayer every day. Number three, find a church where the Bible is taught as the complete Word of God and as the final authority. Lastly, number four, obey Christ's command and be baptized according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. So there you, you have it, right? What's the Bible all about? Well, it's about knowing God as your Father and having peace with God through a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So it's really rather, rather simple. And uh, just like that, that Greek traveler, you know, he's going to all these different religions. There's this book, I think it's called The Golden Ass or Golden Donkey, and it's about this, uh, this man he's trying to, and, uh, I think it's written in, in Latin. He's around the same time period, that little fable I told you. And he's trying to find the truth about God, and he goes and he studies about ISIS and, and uh, these mystery religions, and he, he, he's got to learn more and more and more and more and more, and the more he learns, the little he actually knows, he finds out, and uh, uh, it's difficult, right? And there's all kinds of competing religions and, and, and you know, truth claims. Uh, but the message of Jesus is about this, that God loves you, and life has meaning and significance, and you're significant. You can be a child of God, you have a relationship with God as your Father. As it says in John 3, 16, that God loved the world so much that he gave his only, his one and only Son, Yeshua, Jesus, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have an eternal life. And that's the gift of God we have through trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who is, as he said, the way, the truth, and the life.